Hey guys, what's going on? I'm about to start prepping my shrimp for dinner tonight and I made an intro for this video the other night, but somehow we had some audio issues and didn't end up getting that clip. So Victor and I went to Hillsboro and let the other night to check if the shrimp were running because we had heard the night before that some people had caught some. So we went to the inlet and there were shrimp everywhere. So I texted my family, the shrimp are running, get ready. So we got to the house and the only person who ended up being ready was my mom. My dad wanted to come but he was a little bit sick. So it ended up just being Victor, me and my mom. We caught a ton of shrimp. We had a ton of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. We haven't used these nets in probably like three years. We haven't had a good shrimp run in like three years. There we go. Wow, don't they look beautiful? Oh yeah, look at them. They're so bright red pink. Check it out guys, these are good sized shrimp too. That is a good sized shrimp. We haven't done this in probably like three years. Honestly, I did a shrimping video when I like first started doing YouTube, which was probably like three years ago. And we haven't had a shrimp run that was good, at least that we knew about in probably three years, but pretty awesome. Now you're allowed to keep a five gallon bucket full of shrimp per boat. So when you're on land, it's five gallons per person. But when you're on a boat, you're only allowed to keep five gallons. So we have a long ways to go because I barely covered the bottom of it. Okay, mom, I'll give you this net, and you give me your net, okay? There's only four other boats out here doing it, but there's a couple people on the docks doing it, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people know about it. So, shh, <laughs> keep it a secret. And people always talk about like when the shrimp run, like based on the wind and stuff like that. There's no wind right now. Absolutely no wind. It is an incoming tide, so you would think that they're coming in with the tide. Um, but there is no wind at all. Oh good, can you see that? There's like five of them up. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. You really gotta shake them down in there or else they get out. Oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> so we used to have the um, typical like blue, little blue nets that you mostly see people use for shrimping. And my neighbor found these nets somewhere online and they're so amazing. You don't have to worry about your shrimp jumping out of your net because that oh that one jumped over my net because the sir the um net is so long that they just get stuck in there and they won't swim out if you guys have ever shrimped before you probably know that this net looks good <laughs> oh my gosh they're coming in so good Look at this one, Mom. Is this the one you said was the biggest one of the night? I think so. Wow, look at that. It's the size of my hand. I can tell one was really Look at big. him compared to this one. <laughs> That's a good one. You'll have to eat that one. That's like a little lobster. Like, look at this 
one my mom got. Oh my god. It's the, That's size, huge. it's the size of my hand. It's literally, I think that might be the biggest shrimp I've ever seen. My mom said it's the biggest one of the night. Big, huh? That's definitely the biggest one. There's some other big boys in there, but that is huge. I'm seeing that again, Rick. Oh yeah. This is like going to the casino, and this is when you put in all your chips, or your coins or whatever, and you're cashing out your reward. Or is it because it's getting kind of heavy? That too. <laughs> when You don't realize it, like these nets are pretty light, but when you have that many shrimp in there with the drag, it gets to be a workout. So we're doing good. We're doing real good. If we could empty them out. <laughs> At least got them in the bucket. <laughs> and um, it's like Brooke was saying earlier, everybody thinks they know when the shrimp are gonna run, but nobody actually knows. Guys will tell you, full moon, new moon, in between moon, southeast wind, northwest wind, these shrimp, they use the inlets um, to come on the incoming tide is generally when we get them, but we do get them on the outgoing tide too. And they're always coming from the south. I'm pretty sure these are shrimp coming from the Keys, Biscayne Bay, Miami because that's where all those grass flats are and I'm pretty sure that's where they grow up. And then for some reason, every winter, spring, they seem to migrate north. And then as they're going along the ocean, like we see all these shrimp right now in the, in the inlet, there's millions and millions of shrimp along the piers, the beaches, everywhere, all the way out to 2,000 feet of water, swordfish are eating them. Literally, tr tr probably trillions of shrimp flowing right now. So we got to get back out there. We we got quite a ways to go. Yeah, we do. Now there's like eight boats out here where when we first started there was like four. And the boat next to us is using little like bait nets to try to catch them. Which is good. I mean, they're out here catching them and I'm sure they're getting a couple, but <laughs> they probably see our nets and they're probably like, what the heck? They got, you know, like seven in inch like bait nets that you would use in like your live well. <laughs> That's... That's the thing with shrimping is if you tell one person, you tell the wrong person, the sandlet will go from one boat to 50 boats within like four hours because this is the type of thing where if people get the word, they know it doesn't happen all the time. So they'll pack up at nine o'clock at night and they'll get out there. It's also like 60 degrees right now. So it's a little bit chilly for us. How you doing, mom? Okay. Okay. <laughs> they slowed down a little bit. They did slow down. They come in like little bunches. It seems like you'll have like six come into light real fast at one time and then you won't get any for like a minute or so and then you'll get a bunch more but I think they've already slowed down since we've been here. This is a good light. Yeah. I like to, when I get them in the net, instead of just leaving it down there, I like to make sure my shrimp goes all the way down because if they're halfway in the net, they can swim out real easy. There's one over here, come get him. I got the big one. See? They oh he's that big one almost jumped out. Ah uh, missed him. Come on, get him, he's right there. I got this one. Oh, oh my gosh, there's a lot coming. A lot, a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. Oh, did oh, you get that? I think so. He jumped in midair. Right here. Oh, he went down. Right here, right here. Like, I think you're right. We haven't caught shrimp in a while, but they seem so much Pinker like, and pinker. redder. Redder, oranger? I don't know how to just No, it's 100%. We usually get them and they're really white look, or gray. Look, there's one white one in there. So that's what they normally look like, is that guy right there, but they are super bright for some reason. Yeah, they seem like it. Okay. Come on. It definitely seems like they've slowed down, but we're getting close to the end of the incoming tide, so they may have started at the very beginning of the tide, so they could have been going on for a long time. But I feel like also sometimes I say that and then we'll have a bunch come in. But they come in like 
spurts. Little spurts, yeah. Piece of plastic. <laughs> I don't even know if we have a quarter of a bucket yet. But we're having fun. And that's still a lot of shrimp. You know? You wanna empty yours, Mom? I'll help you. You can't let it get too heavy or else it really tires you out. Get some more. 70. <laughs> 71. Alright guys, so we are back home at the house and we are cleaning our catch now. We always clean them the night that we catch them, regardless of how many we catch. 16. You were at 70. Oh, 73? I thought I was at 71. And I was going to say 72. So that's 73. 74. And, okay, so we're at 74. So let me show you how we ended up catching. We've already done 75. <laughs> We've already cleaned 75 and we have some in the sink. And then we have, I think we got really close to like a half a bucket of shrimp here. And um, I'd say we did pretty darn good. I think we were only out there for about two hours. And what we're gonna do is clean all the shrimp, take all of the heads off, and then we bag them in bags of 100. And that's normally like a meal for like my whole family. So we take a bag out of the freezer. We always say sh shrimp is best eaten the day you catch them or frozen. We don't ever leave them in the fridge or anything like that. We freeze them the day we catch them and they're really good. So let me show you guys what we're doing. What number do you want, mom? 80. 80. <laughs> okay, don't forget guys. Okay, so here's our shrimp. I like to take my thumb and my index finger on one part of the head and then my other hand here. And you're just gonna pinch like this and kind of pull it off. And what, if you do it properly, if you just saw that, the vein comes out with it. 84. 85. Let me show you again. So we just pinch right at the connection of the head and the body, and you'll see that their vein will come right out. See that? That's the vein, which is the digestive tract. Just pinch, and that comes right out. What do you want? 93. Welcome back to the kitchen, our kitchen this time. Now, after we ended up cleaning all the shrimp, me and my mom talked to you guys about how many shrimp we ended up catching, but we had another audio issue. Didn't get the audio for that clip, but I want you guys to guess how many shrimp you think that we caught. Comment down below, pause the video, comment down below. And it was funny because before we cleaned them, I was like, how many of you guys think that we caught just to see who got the closest? My mom guessed 500, I guessed 575 and Victor guessed 375, and then after we started cleaning them and had like 200, my mom let Victor change his number, and he changed it to 525. But we ended up catching 473, so my mom had the closest guess. But anyways, time to start cooking, and I'm going to, this is 100 shrimp, I have six people for dinner tonight, and I'm going to start cleaning them. I'm gonna actually gonna take them out of their shells. So I'm going to just kind of take my fingernail and go under the shell and peel it off. These were frozen and I had them defrosting in the sink in some water. I think I'm going to leave that little tail piece on just cause it looks better. Yeah, it kind of gives you a little handle. <laughs> okay, so nice and simple. All we're doing is peeling the shell off. It comes right off and also taking the legs off at the same time, just like that and leaving the little tail on. Now tonight we're making shrimp kebabs and we're gonna put some pineapple on the kebabs and I'm also making some butternut squash. Okay, so I'm going to clean the rest of these shrimp, get all the um, shells off and then I will season them up for you guys once I'm done, so see you then. First thing is we have butternut squash we need to get into the oven which is set for 400 degrees now. 
No, I did not chop these, Victor did. <laughs> if you've never cut open a butternut squash, it's actually very, very hard. So make sure you have a good sharp knife and some muscles. <laughs> okay, so I have three butternut squashes cut in half. We're gonna have six people here for dinner tonight, so everyone's gonna get their own little nice half. So what I'm going to do is take this extremely obnoxiously large knife <laughs> and I'm going to make some cuts in this. It's going to help the butter sink in and those flavors to get down deep. Um, do you want a smaller knife? It looks like you could benefit from it. It's okay. At the beginning, um, these cuts aren't gonna really do much or look like much, but once they start cooking, you'll see that these cuts actually help a lot. It's not even like they're that deep, but you'll see when they're done, you'll see these cuts. I'm also going to go back the opposite direction. Now that I have my cuts, I have some melted butter here, and I'm only going to do a little bit at the beginning because it's gonna kind of run off besides when you put them into this little seed compartment. Oh, I also took out the seeds. When you cut them open, there'll be seeds here. Kind of like a pumpkin. And um, just take like a fork or a spoon or something to take that out. So, just doing a little bit. Once it cooks a little bit more, I'm gonna put butter on again. So just doing a little bit for now. And then I'll show you guys, we'll put on more later. Now we're going to do salt. We are going to add butter, but we're not gonna add more seasoning. So this is the end of the seasoning. Salt, pepper. And the best part, brown sugar. These are going to be so, so, so good. You can also do this with acorn squash, but I looked at the acorn squashes and they are kind of small, so decided on butternut squash. Both are very, very good though. Now we're gonna put these bad boys right in the oven. How do you know they're not good girls? <laughs> You're okay. fun, bro. It's actually heavy. Yeah, we should start saying that. Make a good girl's a thing. Okay. Now, I'm guessing like 45 minutes. We'll set a timer for 35. Just so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. We'll probably check on it sooner than that so I can add a little bit more butter, but that's for that, time to get to the shrimp. Okay, so I have my clean shrimp that I'm going to season with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I'm going to mix this up. I'm seasoning them in this bowl instead of already on the skewers because I don't really care to season the pineapple. Now, normally I would buy pineapple and core it myself and cut it, but this pineapple was on sale, so that's what we're doing. So let's do a piece of pineapple. Oh, don't stab yourself. <laughs> then we're going to do shrimp. I think we can just stick it through one part. Or do you think we have to stick it through twice? No, once. Just once? Mm -hmm. Shrimp. 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 So we'll do another piece of pineapple. Then a couple more shrimp. Just like that. And now we do it about 15 more times. So we have all of our shrimp on skewers and we have some teriyaki sauce that I bought 
I was going to make it homemade, but you know, Victor and I were doing yard work all day and I didn't feel like making it on my own. So bought a nice bottle of teriyaki sauce. We're gonna put these all on the grill and then we're gonna baste them with some teriyaki sauce. So what Brooke's cooking on tonight is a pellet grill. So it's electric powered and it's kind of like an induction oven. It's not direct heat. There's a fan at the bottom of the grill and it circulates all the warm air and you're getting that wood fired flavor throughout all your shrimp and all your food. Cool thing about it is it's like impossible, literally impossible to overcook your food and you just get a really good grilled flavor. I just took the butternut squash out of the oven and put the rest of the butter on top. And as I was telling you guys that once it starts cooking, these lines will show up more and so that the butter kind of gets to sink into something. And they've been in for about 45 minutes now, I think, but I'm gonna let them keep going. If you guys could only smell these, they smell so, so good. caught shrimp. We don't get them that often at Hillsboro, but they got them a couple nights ago. Shrimps are so good. Now we're talking. Yep. Now we're talking. Here I am. I'm right here. Yes. So the shrimps are peeled? Um, they just have a little tail. They're really good. Yeah. These Hillsboro Inlet shrimps, they don't come around every year, but when they do, it's nice to get lucky enough to find out about the run and get some tasty, delicious, fresh shrimp. Mike, what would you think? I loved it, and I love the fact that we caught the shrimp, which makes them taste that much better. Shish kebabs, fun way to cook. Good job, Brooke. And um, it was just really good. 
Those shrimp shrink so much. My only complaint was I wish we had more shrimp because they were so good. Like Victor said, you can't go wrong with more shrimp. They were just so good. The pineapple on the grill was amazing. Squash was good. Yeah, the teriyaki sauce was was a good touch. I, I like that like sweet like syrup kind of a sauce on it. Your yellow shirt looks beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Uh, <laughs> it was really fun to catch them. We made a lot of good memories when, when the kids were small catching shrimp. We went with Emily one year when she was small and it was really good the way you made it. And I just wish the shrimp ran more, not just once a year. It was really, really great. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Now tonight we have special guest Emily. <laughs> She's been my best friend since we were what, like nine? Mm, younger than that. Seven? Like five. Five? It was like first grade. <laughs> Five or okay. six. Five or six. Holy cow. What would you think, Em? <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Honestly, I've never had a bad meal with this family. Like, on my right hand, I've never had a bad meal. It brought back a lot of good memories. Like they said, we've gone shrimping together in the past, and it's just always a good time. And, yeah, like everyone else said, I wish we had more. <laughs> Thanks, Em. You're welcome. I guess it was since we were, like, five. It was a long time. <laughs>